It's a symbol of state pride and part of our history. Now, history will be made once again. You're watching Iowa's News Now. This is Heaven, Field of Dreams 2021. Hello and welcome to the new Field of Dreams. <laughs> what a field it is. It's a day we've waited a long time for in Eastern Iowa. Major League Baseball, the whole baseball world, setting its sights on the town of Dyersville. Welcome to This Is Heaven, Field of Dreams 2021. I'm Mitch Fick. And I'm David Amelotti, and we have a lot to get to in the next 30 minutes. In just a little while, the population of Dyersville will more than double as 8,000 people fill these stands as folks get to watch Iowa's very first regular season MLB game between the New York Yankees and the Chicago White Sox. Excitement already at a fever pitch. You can feel it in the air. Of course, that excitement's been building since Major League Baseball announced those plans to bring a regular season game to Dyersville. But of course, the road to get here has had more twists and turns than that cornfield maze out in left field. MLB first announced plans to play a game two years ago, back in August 2019. The original game was slated to play, of course, last year. Construction followed in the fall of 2019 on that temporary 8,000-seat stadium made near the original movie site where we are now. That continued even into the spring during the thick of the COVID-19 pandemic. Even though the start of the 2020 baseball season was delayed in the middle of March, there was no word on the Field of Dreams game until early July. The league replaced the New York Yankees with the St. Louis Cardinals, meaning they would play the Chicago White Sox. But just two weeks before the 2020 game, it got postponed until this season. And so with that, the Yankees were back in the game, one of the most prolific sports franchises in American history, taking on those White Sox that, of course, tie directly back to shoeless Joe Jackson and that famous book that bears his name and, of course, the movie that's brought us here in the first place. What makes this MLB Field of Dreams game so special are the fans. There's no point of having this game if there's not fans in all of these stands. So I want to hear from them. Why do they think it's so important the MLB bring its talent here to the Field of Dreams in Iowa? A place where time stands still. Unique, yet familiar. On this field, many pickup games and long tosses have been thrown to honor a legacy inspiring baseball fans since the 1980s. And just beyond the left field corn, a new stadium for Major League Baseball's debut in Iowa. We've never seen it, of course. You know, we've got minor league teams in Iowa, but this is going to be this is going to be really exciting. It's amazing. It's just a whole other side to baseball. You know, letting baseball grow and get bigger. Fans travel from all over to visit the Field of Dreams movie site. Indianapolis, Indiana. Just uh, south of Los Angeles. A little town called Beardstown, Illinois. I'm from Northwest Indiana, but I grew up on the south side of Chicago. And you don't have to know everything about the sport to enjoy this baseball sanctuary. What do you know about baseball? <laughs> um, I know there are runs and outs, and uh, that's about it. All proud to be in Dyersville, Iowa, and happy to share who they're rooting for in the MLB Field of Dreams game. White Sox. I don't know. I'd have to say the Yankees. They're just a, a legacy team. Being a Sox fan, I, and nothing would be better than to watch them beat up on the Yankees. Who do you think is going to win? <laughs> oh, well, as a former uh, Bostonian, definitely the White Sox. Absolutely. For fans like Jack Dolhide, he says what makes this game so special is the bond it forms between people like he and his grandmother. I could never understand why this old lady and would get so excited, it grew on us. And she actually taught us, you know, a lot about baseball, told us the rules, and it was a fun family thing. What is surprising to so many fans I spoke with, how in the world is an MLB Field of Dreams game just now happening in 2021? This movie's 33 years old. We should have had one here 30 years ago. We should have them here every year. There ought to be a series of three or four games with different teams from uh, both leagues playing out here every year. It should, uh, it should okay. happen. That sounds like a lot of fun, and maybe that can happen one day. The MLB does have to start somewhere. After all, if you build it, they will come. And more than 30 years later, ghost players are still coming out here, dressing up and putting on shows for fans from all over the world. And they do it right here at the movie site in Dyersville. In fact, we were out here for an event back in July and talked to some of those players about what it's been like to keep those shows evolving for more than three decades. Put your hands together just here at Ghost Saturday at the Field of Dreams. We're here just to make these, this visit for these people be a little more fun. If we can make them forget about their troubles for an hour and a half, two hours, then our job is complete. Nobody's gonna come say I got a big butt more than one. They're knocking in it. <laughs> we're trying to do something. 
now that you said it, we're trying yeah. to do something different now. It used to be Coach and I would totally ad lib the whole show. Thanks for the help, cameraman. I'll get it. <laughs> this is the first time we've scripted it. And we're trying to pass this on. You know, this is my last year. I'm going to be 71 in September. It's time. And we want to be able to pass it on to these other guys. And they've got something to build off of. We've got a footnote, you know, something, a foot pad to start with. I always tell people, you name me another movie site that still brings in this many people 32 years after the fact. Hey, that's fair enough for us, Ron. Fair enough. For Steve Jenkins, this movie has extra meaning. He was a ghost player in the actual movie. And 30 years later, he's sitting down with our own Jillian Brooks to talk about his experience driving from Cedar Rapids to Dyersville to make movie magic. There was a, an article in the Gazette in um, the spring of 88 saying that they needed ball players for a movie. After some convincing from his wife, Steve Jenkins laced up his cleats, dusted off his glove, and tried out for the team. So at the end of the training camp in Dubuque, I, uh, I was selected to be one of the three guys on the actors team. That's the director, and that's me. We'd film for, we'd usually go 12 hours till 7 p.m. And if we were filming a night uh, scene, we had to show up at 7 p.m. and we filmed until 7 a.m. Each day started off in wardrobe. It was generally a continuation of the day before shooting. So the uniforms hadn't been cleaned because they need to keep the same dirt spots on them and that sort of thing. Then a lot of waiting to get that perfect shot. Time it was waiting for the, for the lighting to be right and for the cameraman to have the, just exactly what he wanted. And then it was hurry up and get on the field and do your thing. And With endless takes. They would film one person um, and we'd they'd go through five or six takes, and then they'd focus the, the camera on the second person, do the same scene, five or six takes. Steve enjoyed playing ball with the Hollywood actors on and off the field. And here's my autographs that I got from different people. Burt Lancaster and Kevin Costner and Amy Madigan and Tim Busfield. Steve's family joined him on set from time to time, his wife Linda even making an appearance on screen. One of the people in the, the big PTA scene that they had, and if you look real closely, you can see her hand go up when they ask for a show of hands. <laughs> the red carpet for the premiere rolled out in eastern Iowa in April of 1989. Some of the guys were wearing tuxes for the debut and to see my face about 10 feet tall <laughs> on the screen was pretty amazing. In Hiawatha, Jillian Brooks reporting. The Field of Dreams movie put Dyersville on the map, but how did the movie get to Dyersville? I speak with the woman responsible for getting production here to Iowa and what her role was on set. Field of Dreams is a great movie and it is a great point of pride for the entire community of Dyersville. There might not be a bigger example of that, literally, than here in downtown on First Avenue. This mural is 80 feet wide and of course it shows one of the most iconic scenes in movie history, those ghost players walking out of Ray Kinsella's cornfield. This mural was already finished last summer, back when Major League Baseball still had plans for the Field of Dreams game to be played in 2020. The artist is Bo Thomas from Wisconsin. It took him 12 days to complete this masterpiece, and this week it has welcomed fans from all walks of life. I've never done a project like that where the whole town kind of stops by and says they love it, so I guessing close to 100 cars pulled over to give me thumbs up or say great job. We want to showcase our community to the best of its ability. We have a beautiful town and we want to showcase that to the tourists that are coming before or during or even after the Major League Baseball game. Dyersville has its roots as a German Catholic community founded in the 1840s. Now economic leaders say more than 100,000 people each year travel to Dyersville just to see the Field of Dreams. But even its rich history didn't make it immune to the pandemic. The good news, this story has a happy ending. Just off 2nd Avenue in downtown Dyersville, a full house inside Textile Brewing Company. This is the brewery's two-year anniversary bash. If you build it, if you brew it, they will come, I guess. Most beers here are brewed in the German tradition, 
Owner Tom Olberding says this crowd is a great turnout, but it's a drop compared to the estimated 25,000 plus people pouring into town this week for the MLB Field of Dreams game. We have been trying to build up our supply for the last two months, um, just so we're ready. It's kind of nice to actually have something in my backyard instead of watching it on TV, so it's going to be great. Uh, tons of people. Olberding opened Textile Brewery in July of 2019. He says the community support was instant. It was great. I mean, it, it was uh, better than I could have ever expected. That joy stripped away. Six months later, COVID-19 surged across the country. It was just... Uh, almost like a funeral. We didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what was going to happen. Um, just kind of the unknown was was really the worst part of it. A reality felt across the entire town. COVID-19, a worker shortage, and the MLB canceled its Field of Dreams game just days before the teams were to arrive in town. Some local businesses, generations old, lost forever. But the town, including Oberding, didn't back down. It's going to make a dramatic difference in the way we see our economy going up, the way that we support small business, then the general overview of this town. I think it's good for morale. If people don't, aren't excited, I feel bad for them because it is a big deal. A fresh start for this eastern Iowa community. I really believe that when this is over, uh, we're going to be proud of what we did and everybody that's um, was involved in this will be proud of what, what happened here. It's the scene that still gives everybody goosebumps, seeing those hundreds of cars roll down the road and drive into Ray Kinsella's farm at the end of the movie. We're going to talk to the person that coordinated that whole thing more than 30 years ago and hear from somebody who was in one of those cars. One of the more iconic moments from the Field of Dreams movie is that last shot. Traffic stretched from miles because if you build it, they will come. I caught up with the person responsible for organizing that incredible feat, but to do so, I had to go back into time. Maybe the largest traffic jam in Iowa's history. 1,500 cars heading to the Lansing Farm just northeast of Dyersville around 1988. The movie home of Ray Kinsella, played by Kevin Costner. His dream of playing ball on his own diamond with Shoeless Joe Jackson of the infamous 1919 Chicago White Sox comes true. The last shot of the movie was scheduled to be shot from a helicopter at dusk as thousands streamed towards the farm. This shot will last four minutes. It's a very long shot. You will all be seen. I dived into our vault of archived footage from the movie's filming. All sorts of people showed up including a nun. With all these cars and all these people here, I thought it would be kind of interesting to know what goes on behind the scenes. I also found the person responsible for organizing this very iconic moment in film, Sue Rydell. We have people from 88 different cities and about seven states represented and even a couple here from Scotland. Fast forward 33 years, I found the former Dubuque school teacher getting everything in order for an upcoming show at the Bell Tower Theater. My nickname was the Bat girl. So if you look in the credits of the movie, you'll find out that it's a Sue Rydell bat girl, and that was me. Phil Alden Robinson. But Rydell's big role was getting Hollywood to shoot the film in Dyersville in the first place. They, they wanted a white clapboard house. They wanted a long lane that would go up to the house and enough land to build a baseball field, and it had to be totally surrounded by corn. And so I thought I found it, so I took a picture. And then I went and knocked on the farmer's house. He wasn't home. And I went, oh dear. So, well, I thought I'll just send the picture in any way. Well, here I am in the last shot of the movie. She would sit down with the film executives to convince them the movie had to be shot in Iowa instead of a cheaper location like Canada. We had about nine farms that they'd narrowed it down to, and I kept showing them the pictures, and then I'd keep putting the Lansing farm back in. And then we'd show more pictures, and I'd put that one back in. And finally, uh, the, the executive said, I think we should go to Sue's farm. Rydell would have to go back to Don Lansing and explain Universal Studios wants to make a movie on his farm. I said, well, you have nothing to lose. You know, will you just talk to them? And because I lived in the area and, you know, and I said I was a high school teacher volunteering doing this, he said, oh, okay, what do I have to lose? Well, the rest is history. My favorite scene. She says it's interesting that people watched the film and saw all those cars lined up and decided they wanted to do the same. I find it amazing. I, 
I, I go out there and there are all these pick people and kids playing balls and family having a wonderful time. And now a major league ball game is going to be on that field. Who would have thought, you know, that that would have happened? I, I think it's wonderful. It's exciting. If I can only get a ticket. Imagine being nine years old and Hollywood rolls into your small town and they're making a movie about your favorite sport. It sounds like a dream and it was for Nick Ungs. And if you know baseball in Dyersville, you know his name. He was a star at Beckman, then a star at Northern Iowa. Now he's the director of baseball operations for the Hawkeyes. He tells me that he and his family got to be part of that iconic scene at the end of the movie. But then years later in the middle of his own baseball journey, he was reunited with the movie's star. So were you guys in that final, the final car scene, or, or what? What did you get to be in? Yeah, the, the big thing I remember too is, um, is they uh, on I think the little radio station. They're like, hey, we need everybody to, you know, get out, get out and help us out with this final scene and stuff. So I remember jumping in the car with my parents and you know turn on, I think it was probably KDST or something like that, Real Country and. Uh, um, you know, we, we were listening to it and we, um, you know, got in this line by the commercial club park and we were just sitting there. We had to have our lights off and then all of a sudden, like, they're like, we're going to tell you and everybody turned their lights on and that's when you kind of see the last frame of the movie and we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it took a little bit after, um, you know, about a year after to, for everything to kind of hit and um, realize the impact that it made on their town. When we did go travel from a 10 year old standpoint, Everybody knew what Darzel was because, you know, it did put us on the map. You know, going to Northern Iowa and being drafted, it didn't matter where I was in the world playing at time, Venezuela, Australia, or uh, Taiwan, um, you know, it always came full circle because they're like, hey, we know where that is. You're from Dyersville. That's the field of dreams. So the one of the best things was I was in AAA and um, uh, we knew Kevin Costner was out there filming a movie. And uh, I was pitching that day, so I got there a little bit later. And then I came down, he was there for about an hour and a half, came for BP, and he was hitting actually my BP group. And then he walked up to me and said, oh yeah, our GM said that you're from Dyersville. So me and him had a good conversation, and then I actually went upstairs, he kind of finished hanging out with the guys on BP, and then it was just me and him up in the clubhouse um, before my start, and we kind of talked about you know, Bull Durham, uh, you know, all these other movies that he made through his career and how he's excited about coming back with his band, he's playing out there. And so it was, it was a cool um, type of thing so much later in my career. I think I was 26 at the time. And you know, the movie came out when I was uh, 10. So it, it was, it's just everything that came full circle. And it like we said, Nick played his college ball at Northern Iowa where he was coached by Rick Heller, who of course is also now at the Hawkeyes as the head coach of Iowa's program. He has his own memories of the summer of 88 and everything going on with the Field of Dreams. He was wrapping up his first season as head coach at his alma mater, Upper Iowa in Fayette, and he remembers when movie crews rolled into Dyersville. That had to be a pretty cool thing when you first heard about it. Yeah, it was. It was, uh, it was intriguing and, you know, I was obviously busy with my first job and recruiting, but um, they, they had um, put something out there that they were looking for players, you know, ghost players and, and tryouts for the ghost players. And, you know, in my mind, I was like, oh, man, I wish I could do that, you know. And I played, I was still playing at the time in the, in the town teams around Dubuque. So I knew the majority of the ghost players. They were a lot of local guys that still played. We weren't allowed to do camps at Iowa last year on campus. So with Nick Ung's connection, uh, being from Dyersville, we, we actually did our youth camps at the Field of Dreams last fall, so that was fantastic. You know, we were able to go over there, uh, you know, 100 kids right on the Field of Dreams um, doing our camps. Filmed in Iowa about a book staged in Iowa. Coming up, the role the University of Iowa plays in the original story that inspired the Field of Dreams movie. The movie Field of Dreams hit theaters in the spring of 1989. It was made for $15 million and exceeded all expectations. It grossed more than $64 million in the U.S. and Canada and more than $84 million worldwide. Now, there are a lot of studios that told director Phil Alden Robinson the book Shoeless Joe just couldn't be made into a movie. Those studios were dead wrong. The film gained critical acclaim and three Oscar nominations, including Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Original Score, and Best Picture.
Shoeless Joe is written by W.P. Kinsella. He's a graduate of the University of Iowa's famous Writers Workshop. I recently caught up with the program director, Lon Samantha Chang. She gave me some insight into the man and also the imagination behind this timeless classic. What do we know about W.P. and his time here at the Writers Workshop? It's so interesting. Um, he came to the Writers Workshop in the 70s. He graduated in 1978 and by all accounts was a perfectly nice guy. A lot of people know about the movie, but maybe not so the book. Can you tell me what is so special about Shoeless Joe, this book that W.P. wrote? The book is extraordinarily imaginative. It's so imaginative that it's, it's hard to believe that the premise exists. You know, when you see the movie, you have this sense of unrealness unfolding before you. You know, time is traversed, you know, the boundaries of time, the idea of baseball in a state that has no professional baseball team, the idea of baseball taking place in a cornfield, the idea of having literary figures in baseball coming in and out of real life. All of that took place in his imagination. And I always find that reading the book gives you insight into a piece of work that you can't get from watching the film. Of course, I'm biased, being a writer myself, but I, I definitely think it's worth a read. Now, you've heard from a lot of people over the last half hour, maybe you've had the same thought at yourself, right? An MLB game at the Field of Dreams probably should have happened by now, but timing is everything, and maybe right now is the best time for pros to take the field here in Dyersville as our nation and our world come back together over baseball. It's been a really tough year. It has been, and all I know is that they have finally built it. They are finally coming. <laughs> I think we can all agree it was worth the wait. Thank you so much for watching. This is Heaven Field of Dreams 2021. Welcome Major League Baseball, and enjoy the game, everybody. <laughs>